Good morning. Good morning. This is November 7th. And we will be finishing chapter 51 in the book of Isaiah today. And now we will be going to the Lord in prayer. And as we go, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. The wonderful showing of your creation is the power of your love, the power of your wisdom, Father. The power of giving us understanding of your word that is by the power of your spirit the power of Jesus Christ in creation the power of the name of Jesus Christ the power of your word we thank you Lord and please Father now open our hearts and our minds to further understanding of your word as you deliver it to us please bless us in this day please help us to remember always to take delight in you who are the Sabbath. And in this Lord's Day, Father, we thank you again. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. Last week, we ended with verse 13 of 51, I think it was. Um that you have forgotten the Lord your maker. Okay? <clears throat> so we opened just a few minutes ago. You have forgotten the Lord your maker. How did chapter 51 start? Does anybody remember? Amy? And the rest of the verse? Verse of righteousness you who seek the Lord. Okay, then it goes on to say, basically, remember who you are, remember? When I ask a question, I'm not just asking for a verse, but the understanding of the verse, the theology in it, um, God's will in it, and God's character in it. When God says, listen to me, he says, listen to me, for I'm going to tell you something, okay? So, who were they hewn from? Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah. What is so important about Abraham? We went over it many times last week and the week before and for the last year. Believe. He believed God. Yes. Okay, so now, remember who you are, Israel, for you are cut from the rock of Abraham who believes me. So you are to be like Abraham who you were born out of. Got it? So now in the second half of chapter 51, God says, yet you have forgotten the Lord your maker. I listen to me, I want you to remember Abraham and Sarah. Now remember always the important part about Abraham, even for us in this room. For those who are found righteous have to believe what? Like Abraham believed. Because Abraham believed God. That's the kind of faith we must have. So when he's saying, remember Abraham, he's also saying, remember, you have to believe me. Okay? So then he goes, yet you have forgotten God your maker, <clears throat> who stretched out the heavens, laid the foundations of the earth. He, he's reminding them here that he is the creator of all things. Okay? Mm -hmm. That you fear continually <laughs> all day long because of the... <clears throat> because of the oppressor as he makes ready to destroy, but where is the fury of the oppressor? Now, does that sound confusing to you? Well, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it does. <laughs> because we don't talk like that. Who is the oppressor here? Satan. All right. Or sin. Fundamentally, it is Satan. Yeah, there's sin. sin. God, though. Oh. Right. <clears throat> Back up a verse. I, even I, am he who comforts you. 
Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies and of the son of man who is made like grass? Okay, that's the previous verse. Now, who is the oppressor? Just being a man. Who were they afraid of? The ones who were oppressing them. Who was oppressing them at the time? The Assyrians. The Assyrians. Y'all go straight to the head of class. <laughs> and he's only been here 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been studying. And he's been feeding me all the answers. <laughs> the Assyrians. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, when King Hezekiah, yes. who died outside the walls of Jerusalem? There were 180,000 of them. King Sennacherib was the king of <laughs> Assyria. Okay. <laughs> They destroyed the northern kingdom. God destroyed all those soldiers <coughs> because Hezekiah had humbled himself. And he kept saying, don't be, remember we went over this last week, don't be afraid of Pekah and Pekahiah, of Syria and the northern kingdom. They are burnt out embers. So God had already prepared the Assyrians to destroy the northern kingdom and Syria. So while Assyria is getting built up in all their own pride, they come to attack the southern kingdom also. <clears throat> God lets them have some because Judah has been sinning. So now they're all afraid because the northern kingdom's destroyed, Syria's destroyed, and they've got this big power of Assyria coming at them. God says, do not be afraid. Because Judah had not completely turned against God yet. Okay, there are a couple righteous kings in this period. Actually, there's three. Uzziah, Hezekiah, and Josiah. Okay, there's those three righteous kings that will be living during this time. Seems like every other one was a vile, evil king. But God was not done with them yet. So now, he's telling them through Isaiah, quit being afraid of mere human beings. Okay. And I'm going to go right back to 13, that very first part of the verse, that you have forgotten the Lord your Maker, and of the Son of Man who is made like grass, that's human beings, you're afraid of them because you forgot me. Okay? Are we afraid of COVID because we forget God? Yep. Are we afraid of this country falling apart because we forget God? Have we fallen into sin because we forget God? Yep. I mean, it's on and on and on. All of those answers are yes. And I was listening to, um, before I came to church this morning, um, Jackson from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, Alan Jackson. He uh, mentioned a couple things that I, which I knew. He mentioned a name that I did not know. He was um, basically considered the like uh, they used to be of schools. Um, a man or a woman would be in charge, the like headmaster. Mm -hmm. Headmaster of the schools of the United States. I've forgotten his name. But he would write all these books and lessons from the Bible for all the schools in the United States to use. They were used until 1963. <clears throat> when, what happened in 1963? That happened, but what happened in the courts that lady. No, 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 that that's that lady 73. That that's 73. Madeline O'Hare yeah, took the prayer out of school. She went, took her case before the Supreme Court. <clears throat> prayer was thrown out of schools. Mm -hmm. 
mentioning you know anything about Christ, you know, it was like all oh, that is separation of church and state, and you know all that kind of stuff. The nation was forgetting God. The first 108 universities in this country, out of them, how many were based on the Bible and Christianity? Out of the first 108? One hundred and six, so it's very close. One hundred and six universities. Harvard was the very first university in this country. And it was set up to spread the gospel message. The reason they made sure and demanded everybody learn Greek and Latin was so they could read the scriptures of old and be able to translate it for themselves. It was demanded of them. So they could learn scripture, so they could spread the gospel message across these United States. <clears throat> How far we have come from then. You know, like Roger said this morning, I know God is because all I have to do is walk out the front door. <clears throat> Where do we have that scripture basically in the New Testament, which we were in last year at this time? This book that I'm speaking of, chapter 1, everybody is born with a knowledge of God. Because they can see God's creation, it's chapter 1 of Romans. Yes, Norma. Okay, Norman's at second place. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Romans. Romans and Isaiah really explain a lot with each other. Romans can clear up any of the dark question, you know, dark areas in our mind that Isaiah poses to us and we don't quite understand. You go to Romans, and Romans answers it for us. But that is, you find that through all Scripture, okay? So now, do you get it? It is, the oppressor here is man. It can, it is Assyria, as Joel said, but it could be anybody. <coughs> it could be our people who are in government right now trying to silence us, trying to take the name of Jesus Christ out of the military, not being able to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a case in Texas right now. Um, these Catholic nuns are taking it before the Supreme Court where in Texas, I found it on, but they are not allowed to pray in the name of Jesus as someone is being executed because they still have executions in the state of Texas. And you know, Catholics often, you know, do the last rites or what all, all that stuff is, and that is very important to them. I believe if they think they are sinning if they don't get to them, and what happens if? You don't do something and you think that is sin, what is it? Sin. Sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they are sinning against their own conscience. So, but Texas right now doesn't allow that. So they're suing for that to be reinstated. Even Texas, which is one of the more righteous states that we have in this country, has laws that forget God. Mm -hmm. And there are oppressors there also. Now it's not just Democrats that oppress, there are Republicans who aren't believers also. Independents who aren't believers. You know, libertarians who don't, you know, we just have to be careful. Other nations would love to come in here and oppress us. There's a huge one over in the East, the Far East. More people on earth in that nation than anywhere else on earth. Yeah. So, all right. We 
We've gone over that long enough, I guess. The exile will soon be set free and will not die in the dungeon, nor will his bread be lacking. Now, who is this exile? <clears throat> This is from a prophecy, by the way. The people of Jerusalem? I mean, <clears throat> the people of Jerusalem? Israel. Yeah. They are, yes. They are Israel or the Judah, really. The Judeans, really. <clears throat> They are not in exile as this is being written. Where will they be exiled? Babylon. Babylon. <clears throat> when will they be exiled? Depends on, well, the first group will go in about 608, the rest go in 586. That's right, Nebuchadnezzar. That takes care of all the time there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel. Yes. Yeah, Daniels. He's staying at the front. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> That's all right. At least somebody's answer. We. Now I'm going to ask him this question. I'm going to ask him this question, just because I asked you all this two weeks ago and you didn't get it, and I reminded you of it. Oh, don't you tell. <clears throat> Actually, Susan did pretty good. Thank you. Daniel was. Ancestors were who? His ancestors. You were talking about him being taken into exile. Well, he was Jacob. from Judah. And what what family? Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Speaking out, Jacob. Jacob. Not Jacob. You're not right. He's still. Judah's a big family, but there's only one person that was chosen to be a king. The line of David. The line of David. Okay. Now, what <clears throat> family was? Ezekiel taken from. Could we have multiple choice? <laughs> <laughs> Could we have multiple choice? Just one. Was it? <laughs> it's, it's just three weeks, huh? <laughs> yes, but we've talked about so much in three weeks. Uh, Levi. 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 Yeah. Levi. Now we're all Levites. Priests? No. 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 Ezekiel was from the priest line. He was from the family of Aaron. Ezekiel was a priest. Okay? So God put a priest and royal blood in the household of Nebuchadnezzar. Why would he do that? He was trying to make it <laughs> make it happen. Right. Yeah, make it happen. Okay, but <laughs> what I was going to say. More specifically, when God was talking to Isaiah, when God was talking to Jeremiah, when God was talking to Hosea, when God was talking to Micah, he said, go and build homes, plant vineyards, Bear children, do not die away, for in 70 years I will bring you back. Well, he used one to translate the other, didn't he? I mean, <clears throat> well, a lot of the prophecies were exactly the same, except for the 70 years. Now, during these prophecies that we're going through right here in Isaiah right now, many were being also shown to Hosea and Jeremiah. The most about Nebuchadnezzar was in Jeremiah. Okay? The name Nebuchadnezzar was used in Jeremiah the most. Did Daniel and Ezekiel prophesy at the same time Jeremiah did? Yeah, they were, they were contemporaries. Yes. Jeremiah was an older man by the time Ezekiel and Daniel started prophesying, but he was alive. Ezekiel and Daniel were teenagers when Nebuchadnezzar came. Jeremiah was an older man. He had been prophesying since the time Josiah was king. 
Who was king at the time Nebuchadnezzar came? He's searching. Hezekiah. Patty, are you searching? Was it Hezekiah? No. no. That's too far back. Zedekiah. Okay. He was not even in line to be a king. But he was chosen because the ones who were directly in line had already been dethroned or killed. And Nebuchadnezzar placed Zedekiah on the throne. Now, why did God put Ezekiel and Daniel in place? We never got to that answer. So he could they could prophesy to the people of Israel in exile, and they could soften the heart of Nebuchadnezzar so Israel would not be destroyed. <clears throat> did Nebuchadnezzar come to repentance? Yes, he did. Yes. As far as we know, Nebuchadnezzar ended up being found righteous. Okay? Wasn't that right Was he one of Israel's oppressors? At one time. Yes. Do not fear man, for I can even make man part of you. Mm -hmm. Got it? If we do as God shows us in the scripture, we can pray for these who would even kill Israel and wipe them off the map. Some of them may be saved. But first they must do what? How do you come to faith? Repent. Hear. Hear. Hear the word. You have to hear it. We have to continue to give to missionaries. We have to continue to raise missionaries up with the Lord and send them out. Happy on the mountains are what? <laughs> it's in chapter 52. We'll be going over it yeah, next I just, week. I just <laughs> Who spread the good news. Okay. Now, so the exile will soon be set free. These <coughs> exiles are the Judeans. <clears throat> they um, will not die in dungeons, nor will this bread be his bread be lacking. What does that mean? They won't go hungry. They're not going to be imprisoned. They're not. Their fate is not to be hungry, to die, and to be imprisoned. In Romans, we are set free from what? Condemnation. Condemnation, which is we are when we're apart from God because we don't have Christ, we are slaves of what? Death. Sin. Sin, Satan, death, the grave. Okay? <coughs> this is future, future prophecy here. <clears throat> because even when they came back from Babylon mm -hmm. they were still sinning against God because they still didn't believe as Abraham did some did, not many they, were, they didn't have enough food to eat what they were growing didn't satisfy their hunger or their thirst <clears throat> The true food and the true drink is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will never thirst or hunger again when you have the Holy Spirit within you. This physical body doesn't mean anything. It is to do the work of God on this earth. That's it. Our soul and our spirit are what count. The new bodies that we will receive, they will count because those will be the kind that can even enter into heaven. This cannot enter into heaven. This is just temporary Shell. cloth, you know, whatever that we roam around in on this earth. The true drink, the true food is Christ himself. So, they will never 
you know, thirsting and hunger and imprisonment, <coughs> none of that is for them. That is for the future, those who would believe, like Abraham, believe even Jesus Christ is God. Because remember what Jesus told in the book of John? He told the Pharisees, Abraham knew me. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was the one who walked with Abraham to Sodom and Gomorrah when, they, when Abraham was saying, please don't destroy them. You know, if you can find 100, if you can find 50, if you can find 10. That was Christ Jesus walking beside Abraham. Yep. Just not Jesus Christ in the human body. So, for I am the Lord your God who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. What is the Lord of hosts' name in Hebrew? Yahweh, Yahweh or Jehovah. Correct. Rouse yourself, rouse yourself. Arise, O Jerusalem. You who have drunk from the Lord's hand the cup of his anger, the chalice of reeling you have drained to the dregs. This reeling, okay, did we even get all this done? Babylon, uh, to fulfill because we've already talked about that somewhat <clears throat> fulfill prophecy <clears throat> but it's more over than that because Israel is God's chosen people okay Actually, more than that, we'll have to say um, Christ. If God had not taken care of, Christ would not have come through the line of David. Right? Well, isn't that the whole purpose of his covenant with the original? Exactly. That is, that's the only way Abraham could be the father of many nations. It is through the belief in Jesus Christ. It is the same, because in the, in the book of Romans again, what is a true Jew? Does anybody remember that? For a true Jew is the one who believes like Abraham. Otherwise, you're just an <laughs> offspring of Abraham. Abraham did not only have two sons, he had others. Once Sarah died, he fathered many more children besides um, Ishmael. <laughs> Like I got that name I couldn't come up with. There were others. But only one was the child of Abraham in God's eyes. Because the others would not be found righteous. Only one was. Just like with Esau and Jacob, only one was found righteous. So you can even go down to Queen Esther. They were saved for what purpose? The offspring. Christ. Mm -hmm. And the promise mm -hmm. made to Abraham. We just went over that week before last. What chapters in Genesis again? The promise made to Abraham. Three. No. <laughs> Abraham wasn't born yet. <laughs> That's Adam and Eve and the devil. Chapter 12, 
His name is still Abram. In the land of where? Ur. 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 Of the Chaldeans. Correct. So, God's proclamation is verse 17. Rouse yourself, the Lord, uh, you, have, you who have drunk from the Lord's hand the cup of his anger. <clears throat> All right, this is symbolism. I don't know if I need to explain this to you. The cup symbolizes God's hands. No, his hands hold the cup. What do we do when we hold a cup? What, what, what's the purpose of the cup? To hold the field. Hold to drink out of. Yeah. Okay. What did they usually drink out of the cup? Wine. Wine. What does wine do if you drink too much? It makes you drunk. Okay. Now we have that set up. We'll go into the verse. Rouse yourself, you who have drunk from the Lord's hand the cup of his anger, the chalice of reeling. Here's the drunkenness. When you get drunk, you reel. You have your head spins. You um, you can get sick. You can vomit. You can do many things that are you know not good for the body. All right. So and it's drained to the last dregs. Dregs. There is none to guide her among all the sons she has born. Now. Since God has poured out this, like, we'll say poison wine, okay, or a bad wine, a sour <coughs> wine, it has made them sick. Sick as in the terms of what? Are they really drunk? Did God really give them sour wine? No. No, he has punished them. They are being persecuted. They are being prosecuted. They are being jailed. They are being murdered. They are being starved, okay? This is all to come in the future. It took 11 years for Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Jerusalem. And they were starving, and they were dying from disease, and Nebuchadnezzar was stopping everything from coming in. Okay? Jeremiah, as far as we can tell, was given just about the last bread that was left in the city to eat because he had been imprisoned by his own people. God made sure that Jeremiah did not die. God took care of Jeremiah. And the reason I keep bringing up the other prophets like Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, they all lived at the same time. Except for Isaiah and Hosea, they prophesied 150 years in advance. But the ones who lived through it, God is also speaking of them. Because they would have prepared their hearts because they were godly, righteous people. They would have been reading, learning the prophecies God had given to Isaiah and Hosea and Micah. They would be learning God's word from them. And God would expound on it to them when they were living. Got it? God can do that to us and with us right now. When we are going through the things or may go through the things that we are going to go through perhaps, mm -hmm. we have the scriptures to stand on. We will understand what's going on as Daniel and Ezekiel and <coughs> Jeremiah had as Mordecai had to, as Esther learned from Mordecai, can understand. Because remember, the disciples, even when Jesus was talking to them, they did not fully understand until after what happened to Jesus on the cross and he raised from the dead and he ascended to the Father. Then, because they knew the scriptures and they knew the teaching of Jesus, then the Holy Spirit opened up their minds to the understanding. The Holy Spirit is the one who opens our minds to the understanding. Okay? For the righteous. The unrighteous will never have the understanding. So, there is none to guide her. They have been imprisoned, and this 
here is a clear sign that this is after Nebuchadnezzar has surrounded the city. Okay? There is none to guide her among all the sons she has born, nor is there one to take her by the hand among all the sons she has reared. This is the city of Jerusalem. Okay? <clears throat> the geography again. In the last couple chapters, God was speaking to Isaiah for the actual geography of Jerusalem or the people of Jerusalem. When <clears throat> it's written, my virgin daughter or the virgin daughter of Jerusalem, more than likely that was the people of Jerusalem and in the last couple chapters. Jerusalem was more than likely the geography, the actual walls and the temple and the palaces of the kings. Okay? Got that, Patty? Yes. Okay. You shook your head like I don't understand. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, good. Now, so here it says, now, but there is none to guide you. Here you're drunk with pain, you're drunk with fear, you're drunk with sorrow, you're drunk in all this persecution. You are reeling from all the devastation that you're going through. And you don't have anyone to help you. The sons and the daughters of Judah, of Jerusalem, were not being raised in righteousness. <coughs> Jeremiah was one of very few. And he was treated so shamelessly while he lived. Proclaiming the message of God. He be, he's known as the what? Weeping. Weeping. The weeping prophet. Why? Depression. Yeah, he was depressed. He lamented for the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, and for himself because he went through some horrendous things. He was buried in mud. He was, he was just, he was so shameless, shamefully treated and shamelessly treated. I mean, they, there was no more shame that could be treated on me except for Christ Jesus himself. I know since Jackie's not in here, remember Isaiah was also shamelessly treated. As far as we know in tradition, he was tied to horses and his body was ripped to pieces. By Hezekiah's son. So the people of God have been treated shamelessly and shamefully for thousands of years. And there's no reason we should be surprised if <coughs> the same is going to happen to us. So there, there is none to help her out. There aren't any, there aren't any armies, there aren't any soldiers, there aren't any people to help build the city of Jerusalem back. These two things have, <clears throat> excuse me, have been fallen you. Who will mourn for you? The devastation and destruction, famine and sword. How shall I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie helpless at the head of every street, like an antelope in a net, full of the wrath of the Lord. Now, the wrath of the Lord is symbolized again. How? by the cup. But he's going to say, this is God's wrath. But he's going to tell them there's something going to change. Therefore, please hear this. You afflicted who are drunk but not with wine. Thus says your God, the Lord, even your God, who contends for his people. Contends for his people. What does that mean? Please. Please. Sorry? Please. 
It in, works, in that's it. <coughs> We're not there yet, but one of my favorite verses mm -hmm. in the whole scriptures is Isaiah 64.4. I'm going to go ahead and say it. No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of a God like you who works for those who what? Wait on God. Okay. When we put our trust and faith in the Lord and not in some vaccine that's going to save us and save the world or not in some human being that's going to come in and shine for everybody, it's God. We should be able to see God in anybody who he puts in place that is righteous. If we are starting to fall for people who do not shine out the light of God, then we better find out why and stay away. Because God put anybody in place and God allows anybody to put in place if it's according to his will. Who can change the will of God? Nobody. Yeah. Well, God himself. God himself. I mean. There's three aspects to the to God. What are they? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Who helps us pray? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Can we sway ourselves? What are we? We're made in the image of God. We're flesh, we're spirit, and we're soul. Can we sway ourselves? We can talk to ourselves, don't we? Mm -hmm. We can change our minds mm -hmm. just by reading something that may be righteous or unrighteous. We can actually go against what the Holy Spirit's telling us if we don't really want to believe it, right? If we want to reject something that the Holy Spirit's like, no, don't do that. It's like, oh, but if I don't do that, this will happen. Now, I've told you all about the restaurant that I opened, and the Lord said, don't do this. I said, oh, but my mom will be so, we just spent so much money, and the Lord told me not to. Then I lost it three years later and went bankrupt. And I know the Lord told me not to. I remember the exact spot where I was driving outside of Knoxville on I-640. We can talk ourselves into or out of something. Well, God can too. His mind can be changed by the Holy Spirit. For that is also God. He's all God. Now, people will say, well... If his mind was set from before the creation of the earth, is his mind really being changed? Not really. Yeah, not really. Because it was probably already there. Because he's always ready for everything. Because he's God. Amen. <coughs> When he says his mind can be changed only by himself, that is to let us know in a human term, only something by <clears throat> something that we could understand. Because we can't understand the ways of God because he's of God because he's God. Mm -hmm. We are just merely created things. Mm -hmm. However, the scriptures do tell us the Holy Spirit knows the Father. And the Holy Spirit can sway God. So in the, I don't know what term to use, but essentially God already knows and already plans. And it's just something that's unfathomable, unfathomable for us. But he's already prepared for everything. So, thus says you, the, your Lord, the Lord, even your God who contends for his people, behold, I have taken out of your hand the cup of reeling, the chalice of my anger, you will never drink it again. 
<clears throat> That's God's proclamation. And he says, it's going to be given to your enemies. I will put it into the hand of your tormentors. Now, we do not know, because he doesn't give us a timeline here. This could mean the tormentors of Assyria. This could mean also the tormentors of Babylon. So you've got Assyria and Babylon. Then, what happens later on down the line? We get prophecies from Daniel and Ezekiel that, well, Syria is going to grow again. And they're going to come in and do what to Israel? Destroy it. Not completely, but yeah, they're going to be tormentors. Yeah. Who else? <clears throat> Who's the one that comes across from the Mediterranean Sea? Before Rome. Greece. Yeah. Well, it's Persia before them, after Babylon. So it's Persia and Greece, and you've got Rome coming down. What happened, what happened to Rome 300, 400 years after Christ died? It failed in no. Gone. But, you know, from the scriptures, what we <coughs> understand in our um, puny way, <clears throat> the whole West, Western civilization is considered the Roman Empire, I guess you could say. So it's not really Rome anymore, but that is what has been influenced by Greece and Rome. It's the western part of the hemisphere, okay? Western hemisphere. The east is influenced by Rome. Russia? Russia? Oh. Oh. What was Isaac's brother's name? Oh. Ishmael. Ishmael. And the sons that come out of Ishmael, well, actually, Edom no, is from, from Esau. Edom, no, Esau. Right, We've got all kinds of different <clears throat> things going on, you know, false religions, all kinds of stuff. So many false religions come out of the Eastern Hemisphere. that want to destroy Christ mm -hmm. and destroy the Jew, okay? So really you've got who? You've got God and Satan, Christ and Satan. Always the tormentor, but God says, I am going to put all that fury into the tormentor. All right, <clears throat> even to the ones who walk on their back. Now remember, we've gone over this in the last several weeks also. You know, it's not just Rome, what happened in World War II? The Russians and the Germans killed millions upon millions of Jews. The Romans killed multitudes of Christians. The Roman Catholic Church killed multitudes of Gentile, of um, Protestants. Mm -hmm. That's all the work of the devil. Yep. The foolishness and pridefulness of man because they forgot who? God. God. They even go by the name of God. But they don't know God because they forgot God. It's like what's happening today. Ooh, I'm going to be late. Yep. The way I, I sing in the second service also. <laughs> All right. So anyway, he says, Who have said to you, lie down that we may walk over you? And that's the ones who, that's the ones who have been persecuting Judah. You have even made your back like the ground. And that's a symbol. Like they walk on them. They walk you know, on their backs and whatever. So it's like a symbol when God says to Israel that I will make your enemies bow down to you and lick the dust from your feet. Those are symbols. Now, perhaps it, he will make them do that. But <clears throat> we definitely know it's symbols of people doing that. 
Um, you have even made your back like the ground and like the street for those who walk over it. It's like they come in, they flattened you, they killed you, they tried to make you no more. Well, all those who did such things, the same things are going to happen to them.